All right, welcome everybody. This is our um, monthly pug meeting, which includes anything the person's user group or person's products. Generally, it's been reserved for um, indicators that we've created that are on Thinkorswim and now on HDSI, as well as uh, the TradeStation indicator packages and algo. So this is your time. We uh, usually ask people in advance to send in email questions. We have a few from, let's see, we have uh, a David, Robert, uh, Tim, uh, Jude, of course, uh, Jimmy H, of course, good. Um, we have Bill, and um, I don't know if I'm gonna get to all of these, but I am gonna cover most of them. So let's get covered uh, real quick. All right, first one, uh, and, and we're going by order. So if you sent uh, questions in two days ago, Jimmy, I think you sent yours in Tuesday. Uh, Jude, he's always prompt. He sent his in uh, yesterday. So uh, from yesterday to now, uh, I, I'm not I'm not opening my email because everything's working. So if you send one in now, post it in the room instead. Uh, that, that might be a little bit better. Uh, we don't want any technology glitches, right? Um, boy, what a wild ride this year and this month. And hopefully we've been able to uh, navigate good things for you guys. Um, all right. So let's see, Tim. Uh, before we begin, I'm assuming the sound is still good, and I'm assuming, um, what am I assuming? Because you you just don't, I don't know if you guys are old enough, but there was a show called The Odd Couple, the original one, with um, Tony Randall and Jack Klugman. You know, I can't remember how I remember certain things, and I can't remember other things. But anyway, The Odd Couple, there was this one particular episode, it was live, and it was shocking, because it was like literally the first time on uh, television a swear word was used. And it was when Tony Randall was in court, and he wrote down and spelt out the word assume. And he circled, when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. And uh, it has always stuck in my mind, that that one episode, because it was like, Oh, you know, you're an ass. And, and you know, that was, I believe, the first time on, on regular TV a swear word or ass at the time was considered a swear word was used. So I just try not to assume to make an ass out of you and me that everything is perfect until Ruth actually, then there it is. Awesome, sweetie. Thank you very much. When Ruth puts it all perfect, we're good to go. Please take a second to read the disclosure. I may seem a little happier than normal because we are prognosticating upside in the market. So far, we're okay with that uh, uh, call. And um, I did something very unusual for you guys today. Very unusual. At the expense of maybe being grouchy tomorrow morning. I'm drinking a cup of coffee, which means I probably won't sleep on time tonight, which means I'll be tossing and turning. I probably shouldn't do it. But for gosh sakes, I need a cup of coffee. So um, tomorrow morning, take it easy on me in the trading room. All right. Uh, I wanted to get through what are we doing with COVID-19? This is covering a, a few things. Uh, we had some questions of why do I look and, and what am I scanning for? Um, I believe we're going to need the sectors to focus on as we get through COVID-19. Uh, this particular slide, I'm not going to go through all these stocks with you guys. And there's obviously more that we're going to be seeing. And I believe that the market conditions and why our products work so well. The name of the game when you're stock picking is to look for relative strength, good momentum. A momentum indicator is the PPS indicator. So it kind of goes in, in reference to my uh, uh, one of our questions, which we'll get into in a minute. These are the sectors that I think the top sectors. I want to kind of stay away from REITs. That may be wrong of me, but I anytime I say to stay away from something, I mean, it's not on my radar screen right now. And it is one of the worst relative strength segments of the market. And that's where we're getting into the actual uh, question. When do I use PMC? All right. And where do I find it? All right. PMC can be found on now. Um, HDSI, and I'll share that with you in a second. It can be found on Thinkorswim as an individual chart uh, indicator. And then we have it on TradeStation, and that's what you guys have, and that's what this is uh, about, our uh, TradeStation program. It's what originally um, the person user group started with. 
And while I'm on this page, I'm going to cover uh, Tim's question, which is, uh, what is ATR rating? So I'm covering two for one. Uh, this is a two for one. And then we have a different Tim who asked, and I might as well get to this question. Tim, Rob, uh, Tim, Rob, uh, Tim, I shouldn't give out last names. Uh, yes, you can ask a silly question. I'm new to trading and notice little messages that come up in the trading room, a screen with ka -ching and sound and then the message. Is there a place where those messages are stored so I can review them? And quite frankly, there is. And it, it's, it's interesting why you ask that question because at the very top, there's uh, an alert box and then there's a chat box and then there's a gray scroll bar. And you can go and see anytime I've posted a message or post an alert, it stores it, I think, up to two weeks or maybe longer. And you can scroll up and down and see any time I've made a comment. So, uh, for example, the last time we were together, I posted something here at 4.27 in the afternoon. For those interested, Tesla, Facebook, Qualcomm, and Microsoft all had positive earnings and higher in post-trading sessions. It posts the time. It's time-stamped. And there is a time. Um, at the upper left corner, there is a, um, in the upper left corner is this one, two, three lines. And that is a control index indicator, index line screening. And if you click on that, and then you go down to where it says archives, click on archives, and then you're going to come up to something that says recording. So if I may, I'm just going to kind of bring this in a little bit for you. And so the ka -ching, I don't know if it's going to work out that well on the recording. The ka -ching is uh, the alerts at the top. The recording's under archives. You go down and you click on recordings. And there, the recordings. Now, in the main trade room, it'll list everything that every time I talk, uh, and, and when I make a post in the room, it's recorded. So that's how you use that. All right. So hopefully there's, we're going to go right by it. All right. There, out in the garbage. Next, PMC. What does it mean? It's color coordinated. Red, no bueno, meaning not good. Um, right now we have utilities. And I'm just going to start from collating from top to bottom. The strength meter, this is it. how I've laid out my trade station package for everybody, is first by sectors, then the um, I created this for me, a leveraged ETF sector. It obviously has both bull and bear, uh, bull and bear uh, ETFs, and then I've got my volatility products, and then I've got my home builders and, and the top stocks that I would be looking at in the home builders. If you notice the home builders, this is the XHB. It's not the actual guys that build a house like Toll, Pulte. It's, this is the peripherals that stuff goes into a house. Restoration hardware for hardware for kitchens. iRobot, maybe the, the Zumba, Roomba, whatever it is. The, the vacuum cleaner that I bought once and would never buy again. Uh, Best Buy, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, I always refer to Bed Bath & Beyond as man's most hated store because during football season, specifically when in Chicago during a Notre Dame game and we were having people over for Thanksgiving, my wife had asked me to go with her so she could run into Bed Bath & Beyond and I could double park and park the car for her in the middle of the most exciting game ever on a really lousy November day. And so with that said, it is my least favorite store. I will never invest in that company. It, I, I probably never should say never, but in any event, it is in that home builder sector. Anything that goes into a home when you build it or people go and buy stuff is in this sector to the most part. So anyway, that's how I've listed things in the sectors and the stocks within those sectors. How do we find good sectors? By using the relative strength. Stocks and sectors that are outperforming tend to get money more money attracted to them by institutions so we have vnq which is a real estate investment etf and you'll notice it is starting to see improvement and the color coding goes like this and it's systematic across the spectrum of all platforms so whether it's thinkorswim whether it's tradestation of course and now hgsi 
red means that the the that product is lagging it is going down or not up versus the s p the fuchsia color is improving meaning it's starting to get a little traction bright blue is very good it means it's outperforming and dark blue means that it has outperformed but it's starting to weaken versus the overall market and so those are the the segments that we're looking for are fresh new buy signals when you're seeing starting to see improvement um and and with that said here's one right now today You'll see fuchsia color, XAR is aerospace and defense. And uh, you can see that it's in a daily buy trend. Uh, it's in a weekly downturn. So it's starting to improve relative to the overall market. On a monthly basis, it really hasn't recovered its, its lost ground since the February peak. In the uh, weekly, it's still kind of in a sideways trading range with a sell signal. Daily's been in a buy, and it's just starting to see relative strength improvement. So it would be on a maybe at best uh, a watch list that I would say it's starting to see improvement. All right. Um, a watch list, I wouldn't be attracted to it right now because not a, it needs to start to show stronger improvement relative to the overall market, and I'd like to see the market at least break out of a of a trading range. And, and that's how I, I would look at this from a systematic approach using the PMC indicator. Bright blue stuff, muy bueno. And uh, right now you've got bright blue is the energy sector. Oil services, OIH is now bright blue. Uh, USO, crude oil obviously has gone from negative 37 to now um, we've seen this is the ETF USO. We went in crude oil from negative 37 to positive 33. A week ago, we were trading at 27, 26, 27. And I said, my indicators and my work suggest 33 to 35. Here we are. Uh, energy sector was one that, that caught up. I use the relative strength to, to help to share with me what sectors are starting to improve. Here's one that we're starting to see relative improvement right now. And it's the industrial sector today. Finally, we're starting to see the industrial sector start to gather steam. If you look at the difference in the chart basis between uh, aerospace and defense, which was in a trading range and it was below or midpoint of its range, the difference is this particular stock is starting or segment of the market sector ETF. That is the industrials XLI is starting to see some relative strength improvement. It's only in a daily buy. And that to me says, you know what, maybe I should start looking for some of the stocks in that sector and see what looks good. So what I do is what's called the top down approach in the market. What what index looks good and for top down, we would start with advanced decline analysis and the top segment of the markets. So here's the top stock indices that we have to deal with uh, right now, the strongest of all of them still remains to be the Qs. And it's my contention that the Qs, if you've been in the live trading room, this is maybe weird to you if you're not in the live trading room, but I said, this is a market that could break out to new highs without anyone, without flinching. And the path of least resistance is up. More people are really skeptical of this market right now and are very apprehensive of the market and are willing to maybe sell or stay out because they're afraid it's at its highs. There are too many stocks within the queues, PayPal, now Facebook, Amazon, that are broken out to all time new highs and have taken out not just the highs forever, but their all time highs now, not at the end of the year, not two years from now, now. And can that, can that kind of transpose into the queues? If we continue to see stronger volume trends and if we continue to see the advanced decline continue to rise and so it's not just showing it's five stocks leading the way more stocks in that that see a rise in the advanced decline the better it is so out of the top down approach in the marketplace the queues right now are leading the way up and that should transpire transpose into maybe better times for the s p 500 uh as well 
So we want to see a continuation of the advanced decline upside movement. And we have another tool that we created for VIP students and users. And it was Sherman McClellan's formula. The problem with Sherman McClellan's formula is it worked great back in the day in the 70s when he created maybe in the 80s. It was weighted using the advanced decline breadth and moving averages based off information in the NYSE. We created a McClellan oscillator to use the same theory formulas, but only use it with the data for the individual indexes for which we're trading. So this is a couple of the tools in the PUG user group that we help to define top-down approach in the market. Relative strength, which is PMC, breadth breaking down each individual top stock index to tell us what is the makeup of the queues, what is the strength of the queues with the, the amount of stocks within that. The more stocks that go up, the merrier it is, the more bullish it is. If we can get more accumulation of stocks within the, or what we refer to as the breadth of the market continues to get more positive, the likelihood that we're going to see continued breakout to the upside in the S&Ps is a good outlook. Right now, we have an upside movement out of the, based on today's action, in this modified McClellan oscillator, which is positive. It's not negative. It's not oversold. It's not overbought. It's in a positive momentum right now. The volume of our specific volume indicator is also showing positiveness. So stocks within the S&P 500 are, are, this is my top-down approach, my two choices to be long, TQQQ, which is the leveraged ETF on the Qs, and again, SPXL, and uh, that's the leveraged long ETF on the Spider. That's what I'm looking at right now based on the indicators and the tools that we've created. One last uh, was a question here. What is ATR and why is it so important? And I mean, I've had this question before and it's, it, I don't know if we're getting a lot of new clients that asked that question. I think it was covered before. I'm gonna briefly cover it right now and move into the more important questions about the algo optimizer and then HGSI and the scanning for stocks. Average true range just gives us an idea and I use, and if you go over here and you click on this, and you go to format, I use a 10 period, which is half a month. There's generally 20 trading days, 22 trading days, 19, 18, 21 days in a month. So two weeks is 10 days pretty much, right? Depending on a holiday. If there's a day off on a Monday, then it would be nine trading days. But 10 days is a two week period. And I always like the two week period. It gives me a better look-see in the market. Um, I use ATR as a defined measurement of how much movement is in the market. On a 10-day average basis, for example, the KIE, which is the insurance sector, it's the top of the list, I just chose it because it's at the top of the list, has a 10-day movement of 99 cents on average. Today, it had a 49 cent range. So basically, when you take a look at the ATR, it helps to define the condition, the range, and is one of the things that I have to point out that is only one of the things that I will bring to your attention here. And we're gonna look at the S&Ps, the futures. And it is already built on my chart down below, ATR. So you can clearly see ATR on the ESM, the June futures. The average true range is 76.95, and today we had a 67 point range. Today's range, it was an up day, and it's lower than the 10-day average. All right, let me repeat myself. Today, the ATR contracted on a very strong up day. How strong? Gee, it was up over 1.5%, 1.82% to be precise. So systematically, ATR is a measurement, and, and I'll just give it to you straight. The highest of the two or the lowest of the two calculations from the prior day's close to the high or from the low to the high, whichever the greater of the numbers are. So if it's a gap up, you would go from the prior day's close to the high, and that will give you the ATR on an update. 
if it's a wide range day, you still would take the consideration of what the low to high combination is. Whatever the two of the greater combinations, that's your ATR. Take that number divided by X amount of days. You can do a five period, a 10 period, the 3000, I don't care. Your average, the word average is over multiple time periods, all right? So the ATR is not generally specifically an indicator that gives you direction, rather condition. But I will say and point out to you, when it comes to the S&Ps or the stock market, it is an indicator that helps to define a condition of the market because stocks tend to rise slowly and in small increments. And so in more bullish environments, that's why volatility like the VIX or the ETN VXX very systematically and all the, by the way, coincidentally, the lower the volatility, right? The, the more, uh, the less bearish people are. So when we get contraction in ranges, it's also an indication that the market may be trending higher. Coincidentally, stocks go down farther and faster. They take, they fall out a window to the downside and they take the stairway to the upside. So when ATR is expanding and breaks out, it gives you an indication that you're under duress and that the market has maybe perhaps more declines and it's in a volatile period. So you'll see rises in VIX because the ATRs are also correspondingly moving up. Rise in VIX is an indication of a falling stock market and an increase in the ATR is also systematically associated with declines in the stock market. So ATR for me, if I can see the market in its ATR in the last week, notice we haven't seen any new trend lower develop yet in the in the ATR. So that says we're still in a volatile period. Therefore, you're not seeing the VXX decline precipitously with the advance in the stock market. When you start to see the ATRs contract, you'll start to see the volatility or VIX contract as well. This is a good sign if we do get contraction in ATR that the stock market is more trustworthy of a move to the upside. This is one of the only markets that I look at ATR as maybe a trend condition. It's the only market, the stock market that is, that I look at ATR as a trend condition. It also helps us to discover as we get into the Algo Optimizer program, the um, according to our back test studies, the five-year average for E-mini S&Ps was 28 point something. You can round up and say 30 handles a day. 30 handles a day. How the hell does anyone figure out what's going on when you had a historic 240 something reading, 245 S&P points on a 10 day average? Never has happened, gang. Not since the inception of the E-mini S&P futures have we had that type of insane movement on a 10 day average. So we are still at 76.95 more at a historic norm. If you remember, uh, back in August, we were seeing the stock market open and close uh, and gap up and down by 1%. Back then was pretty wild in August, right? Back then was pretty wild, an incredible volatility period. And boy, the market went down and the volatility went up. So ATR helps you to define that you are in a world of hurt, of increased volatility, wider ranges, meaning generally speaking, bigger risks. And so if you have a higher ATR environment, you need to adjust and, 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 and modify your trading programs. It just makes it damn near impossible to navigate any type of, of, of a program that would base on history when you have new historic mean measurements. So ATR, we used this in the last pug meeting. I re would refer to you, I know we covered that before, but it, it was another good question. And so for our new members or new people that have joined us, thank you for that, that question. PMC is a relative strength tool that defines the percent change of an underlying market to the S&P 500 in this case. ATR just measures the distance of or the amount of movement a, a, a stock or underlying product is moving and we average it over time. That's the, uh, that's the two conditions that we have there. 
All right, I want to introduce to you uh, HGSI. Uh, I believe there's probably a handful of people that have HGSI uh, that were big HGSIs. They were probably HGSI users before they came to become a trade station user. Um, could I throw you under the bus? Uh, anyone that had HGSI before trade station, could you just type in the webinar mode chat and say me? Two little words, M-E. Anybody out there? If not, I'll move on. Okay, thank you, Mike V and Neil. Uh, three under the bus, just your first name. Hold on, let me get a little more caffeine in me. And by the way, I am wearing pants. I'm not in my underwear and I'm not in pajamas. I am dressed. I walk the dog in the neighborhood. And so therefore, I'm not one of those guys that are um, a skivvy Zoomer or a skivvy uh, person. Just for the record, I want everyone to feel comfortable knowing that you're getting great education and, and insights by a fully clothed individual. Um, what I wanted to make mention of what we've got going on with HGSI, uh, this is an incredible program, uh, I'm here to tell you. And for a stock trader, for a stock trader, the, um, the setups that we've laid out already, whether or not you want to use these or add your own and in and, and filter out and add filter or subtract filter but anything you want to learn about a scan a buy signal with a pmc improving this obviously just filters out one thing i don't want outperforming i want improving and so i can take a look at what sectors in industry groups are giving it to me by improving um i can take a look at a couple other things if we are going to be into stock specific, um, and, and, and a, what I would have to say is my humble opinion is this year is going to be one heck of a stock pickers market environment. And I think the first tool that's going to help us uh, do that would be a tool that can really narrow down the industry groups a lot better. I mean, to the point where aircraft and part manufacturing um, now, this is a sector that is obviously the stock is lagging versus the S&P 500. Here's another thing is um, we can find out how many stocks in that sector are actually in uh, a buy signal. And, 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 and that tells me that, OK, we're starting to see an improvement in the buy signal in that entire sector. Now, let me repeat that, because the more stocks in a sector that are in a buy mode, a PPS buy mode, and you're starting to see the stock improve, that tells me that things are really getting better for that particular group and there's money flow coming in. Now, the other day, it's a little late today, but uh, Cheetah Mobile, for whatever reason, uh, had generated a high closed doji and it had already gone up, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. But mostly we, are start, we started to see uh, in Cheetah Mobile uh, your high closed doji an improvement in the relative strength. Now it's not down below on this chart right here, but the the being able to see strength ahead of the market, and you know that's what this market is—a very tricky little beast. She does a lot of things to us. She goes down, which we saw yesterday, a dump before pumps. There's a lot of treachery and trickery in the marketplace, and we're going to need to look for opportunities. Today we have an opportunity to see. Uh, potentially some scans that'll come out tonight. Um, here's one, Ab Marley. Ab Marley, in fact, uh, if you look at specialized materials, we haven't. That's a name, a blast from the past. We haven't heard that in a long time. I told you in the in the beginning I wasn't going to go and examine every one of these stocks. However, Ab Marley is an industrial chemical material sector. Ab Marley is one that had populated already on my screen and in my scans. And Illinois Toolwork is my favorite go-to guys on a global demand. If we start to see the economy start to get back to work, you're going to see industrial chemicals and materials. And, and, and this is just a few of them. And I think we're going to have to, as a momentum trader, to be able to, A, use our money more efficiently, meaning get in, get out, move on to the next one. That's that rotation effect. A long-term investor is just looking to get stuck into a trade, get the dividend yield, and move on and not worry about things. I think that we are gonna see a lot of 
upside still out of consumer staples, food and beverages. I like national beverage, which is uh, LaCroix, Fizz, uh, uh, Constellation brand uh, is, I think people will still be drinking a lot of beer and wine. And I think the 4th of July this year is going to be more meaningful on a booze fest than you can imagine. Um, and I, I, I like uh, Kraft Heinz, by the way, KHC, I can't imagine going through it without a, a barbecue grill. If there is a hot dog, a Beyond Meat, a fake burger with not having any Heinz uh, uh, ketchup. But anyway, that's just me. Um, now, this is a little joke, and I will tell you about Kimberly Clark. Um, this is no joke. This is a true story. You can Google this, add your own thoughts if you want. It. There, were, there was a condom shortage this past March, believe it or not. I am imagining with people shacked up and isolated that nine months from now, we will probably have the biggest COVID-19 baby boom and therefore either Pampers or some type of diaper service is going to be desperately needed in the next year to 12 months. So I still think some consumer staples, and it's not a joke, I'm dead serious, it is kind of humorous, but I definitely believe you will be seeing a huge baby boom. So pregnancy tests should be off the charts. Um, People visit where to get pregnancy tests. Probably the one stock that stood the worst of my whole list in the retail uh, sector, which is Walgreen Boots Alliance, WBA. Um, so anyway, you can go through this list yourself and, and you'll see some of these. If we get back into transportation and if we people want to go back into Las Vegas entertainment and destination, I don't know about Six Flags continuations move. MGM, you got to fly there. Alaskan Air and Love both have great balance sheets. Both moved up pretty precipitously in the last couple of days and both pay a dividend that's pretty decent. So any event, you can take a look at some of these names later. Um, again, we had the Algo 17 program. This is a program that allowed people to modify their own program modify to adjust for changes in volatility and, and and markets that they're trading. Do you trade every single second of the day? Probably not a good idea. Do people do that every single second of the day? Yes. Are they fluent in education? Probably not. This was a program that cost less than $4,000. We tried to train people with this program so that you could deliver and develop your own systems. And let when you see the signal that you want to be in and control whether you want to be long, short, or not in, that you're able to create your own programs. Um, this to me is still one of the most fabulous programs for system and futures traders, which is available on TradeStation, which is what the Pug Group was all about. And again, for stock traders, this is HGSI, and this is off the charts, unreal. And I'm here to tell you, it's only taken me five years to put my indicators on this platform and to be able to look at, for stock traders, how we can systematically get down to the very nitty gritty detail of finding the right stock in the right sector and look at fundamental information at a snap of a finger. So the, the difference is one's for automated trading through TradeStation. The other is not real time. It can be updated for real time. It's more used for end of day. It's more used to detect what stocks in the specific subsectors are looking better. And therefore, this is one that I think that all users in the stock industry will be maybe attracted to more than any other program. We have an annual subscription of only $727, which I've just seen an advertisement for someone to buy a Bollinger Band, a VIX, and something else that you can get for free for about $2,000, which just blew my mind. But I mean, there's a lot of people out there doing things, God bless them. But I'm over here with my name on certain things, and I stand by almost everything we put out. So I wanted to get through the differences of what the platforms were, number one. Number two, how does it relate? Where are, can you find these indicators? You can find the indicators via trade station programs, via HGSI now. And by the way, that is something brand new. We haven't discussed this and uh, or in detail. But I wanted to get through our next few questions, which everyone wants to know about. And we did a class at the beginning of the year. 
Some of you attended. And uh, those that attended that had TradeStation, they were given this file right here. And this is called Razor Focus. And basically what we created was a based back in January. So let's take a look based back in January. Back in January, when we had that class, the market was in an ATR environment of more normal statistical means. This model was a long only model because why? Approximately 72 or 75 percent of the time, the markets go up in stocks until you get into maybe a one time pandemic situation or recessions. True? True. A long only model, which went back 11 years, has a pretty decent equity curve. Is it perfect? No. Are there drawdowns? Yes. If you start off at the peak, you may experience a drawdown. Okay. If you expect a peak, you may expect a drawdown. And that's what part of systematic trading is about. Nothing is perfect. So this did avoid a lot of bloodshed to the downside. It's had a couple good trades. And again, it was programmed in an ATR environment of normalization, not insanity. And that is where we stand with the long only. Can it be modified? Absolutely. You can modify it by knowing what, again, the key question was, was by uh, ATR. This, by the way, was a shorter term swing model. This was the long only. 60 minute spy. Can you use this to day trade e mini SPs or take signals off of? Yes, you may. This right here, and we'll take a look concurrently. This is a five year because it has a performance summary of something like let's review over the last five years. <laughs> long only still with a buy and hold return of the market meaning if you bought the s p's over the last five years you're up six and a half percent well that sucks this particular system has only been out of five years four months five days four hours and 30 minutes this has only been in the market eight months 14 days and has outperformed to even to this date all right so again that is the long only swing trade model. This in times of maybe as in January, I said, we're probably gonna come to a correction one day. And this was the SPY, which we created a 60 minute short only model. Well, it is profitable over the last five years. It ain't that great. Why? Because the market really hasn't gone down except for a couple big swings to the downside. And again, from the peak in February to the trough in March. And we've had a couple doohickeys along the way. And then lastly, we created a model, which is both the long and the short, which we continuously update in our live trade room. I don't change the, um, again, the, the, the parameters have not been changed to protect the innocent or the guilty or anybody. Uh, but I do show the, re, the signals in the room. And this is, just to give you an idea, this is the equity curve for this model. What does this model do for you? Um, it's not that bad. Obviously, we've had a, almost a two-to-one uh, profit factor on shorts. Uh, and if you notice, we have over 50% accurate in both 55 and 57 in, in shorts and longs, respectively. And again, the buy and hold return in the market, 6%, your rate of return. 52 on initial capital and just a thousand percent of return on a capital how much is required the uh market it's only been in the market for 10 months because it gets in it gets out and it misses a lot of sideways action and that's the uh algo optimizer based on razor focus in the trade room many people ask me about the five minute model and the five-minute model, and I constantly tell everybody, we built that model, I don't know how many months ago, how many months ago, and I posted it on YouTube. It had great performance, and there are times when it does bad. 
when does it do bad? Well, for example, after strong uptrends, it will go through a period of consolidation. And I constantly tell people, I don't know how many times I have to tell people this. You cannot trade this all the time. In a 70-point environment, you cannot define the risks. You can control the risks and you can choose when you want to use this system. Today, we had a wonderful upside trade. And I know, as sure as I'm sitting here, how many people heard me say, stop trading today. You made your money. Go home. And, you know, and one of the main reasons is because the market was probably after a strong uptrend, may have gone into that little thing called a sideways trading range. Okay. Um, Boris, I don't know what your question is, and you need to be a little bit more specific for me to answer that question, sir. Um, both TradeStation and Thinkorswim have the exact same formula, but they have different time periods. So I'm not quite sure uh, your, your question there. We did add a, a specific function, by the way, on the pivots. And it could be because of the closing basis. One could be taking the close of uh, the Globex at five, and one could be taking the, 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 the central time 315 minor close. The um, pivots are normally the same, except for one small little thing. I like your question. Uh, I think you had asked that earlier, or uh, it just didn't come across my desk. So I want to address that real quick for you. So if you go over here to John Person, and I'm just, this is a 60 minute ES. So let's just go to a daily pivot. So you'll notice that there are um, now, if you see this right here, one line red, one line dark red at that is one line light red the blue line the green line and the gold line so when the gold blue is above gold the market's in a bullish market environment if it's bullish we add because s or excuse me in a bullish environment the second resistance is so far out of the way we just add mildly that little red line so uh, i'm not sure but the what you will not find on thinkorswim is the gold line and that other filtered line right there. What you will see is the projected support and the projected resistance. When we do a trade station event, then, or a think or swim event, I will share with that, or maybe ask that in the live trading room tomorrow, and I could share that with you because I know you're in the room. But for the most part, there's only two various, two variants, uh, differences between think or swim and trade station. Think or swim does not have my gold line overlaid, it only had the filtered pivot, which would be on a bullish day, would be S1 and R2. It's not going to have that line. But if everything being equal, maybe it could be off by a settlement of a quarter or a half a point, and they could be off by a tick or two or something like that. But for the most part, trade station, trade navigator, even HGSI, they all line up. They're all the same, so they should be all right. Now, if you're looking at a different pivot level, I'm not sure if you're asking, is that a quarterly basis, a daily? I'm just comparing an apple to an apple time frame, daily to daily. I hope that answered your question. But if there is any differences, it would come because of maybe a settlement price between the Globex 5 p.m. and again, maybe the 315. That's it. All right. All right. Um, let's get into. The main focus of the question, which is, thank you for reinventing Algo 17. This is Jude um, and myself, a level playing field, day trade products, such a volatility. Um, I am still able to make good profit. Speaks volume on your TA prowess and your excellent TA indicators. Thank you very much. I'm happy for you. I really am. Believe me, when you guys make money using my stuff, it ain't because of me. It's because of you. It really is. You're the one pulling the trigger. Remember that. My idea is that we have great analysis, great execution, great signals. Yes, not every system is going to give a trade all the time. And to trade a five-minute model every single second of the day is kind of tough in this environment. Being picky and choosing and having stringent, stringent or maybe better filtered results, or you can tighten them up. And how do we tighten those up? Format strategy. If you know that we have a hell of a whale of a program in, in ATRs, you can create your own time frame. 
and say, I only want to start certain times of the day. I want to only end certain times of the day. Um, and again, you can also expand or contract your profit loss. So in times when we see the condition of the market changing, remember, 70 some odd points in the S&P 500 is still twice the five-year historic average of volatility in a given day. And when you have a lot of moves that happen overnight, generally speaking, you're going to walk into a day where you're going to get a lot of chop and slop. You're not going to go in a trend condition. And therefore, if you're looking for a scalping, which is a, more of a five-minute model, what you probably want to do is put in a, a lower max trade loss and a lower max take profit. So when we did this, I believe it was probably on the increase. And I double check this. I don't have the facts in front of me, so I don't want to give out bad news. But when I gave that program out, I think we were on the rise of over 120 ATRs on the upside or somewhere thereabouts. It was in my recollection, we were over 120 S&P points at the time, a day. So we've lost 50 of those S&P points, meaning we probably need to, in the live trading room, remodify the system, right? Doesn't that make, that makes a lot of sense, I'm sure to everybody. So in, in the question that I just got um, for this pug, I hope to get clarification on customizing, especially on the ATR, so I'm, I'm glad, and the compression exit. Okay. Um, all right. What is the compression exit? You can modify and say, and you don't, you can optimize. And anytime you optimize a program, it's just wants to give you the best profit. But the best profit might come at, at a loss expense that you might not like to trade with. So at this point in time, you can actually create your own trailing stop function. And I want to define what is behind the algo extreme. First off, starting from the top, you can start time. You can you can start at six in the morning, and you can add to say, is it best to trade at six in the morning, or should I? Uh, what is the best time? Uh, and add 360 minutes increments of five. So that's six hours. So any time between six in the morning and 12 noon, that's three. That's what that that's that optimization is telling you. What's the most profitable time to trade? Six, seven, eight, eight thirty-three, eight thirty-five on a five-minute increment. Eight forty, eight forty-five, eight fifty. It'll optimize to find out what the best time to trade is. What's the best time to stop trading? Well, seventeen hundred is five p.m. You got to stop at five p.m. And you can optimize subtract minutes from that. Then you can also take a look at. Well, I want to trade two times of the day. Maybe from ten thirty to one, and then maybe from two to four. And you can trade and, and pre-program those two time frames or your favorite time frames. Your position sizing, you can trade the amount of money you're trading, the risk factor, and the amount of positions. In this case, we always use for futures two lots. So it allows us to scale out if it optimizes at a scale out. Uh, trailing stops, as we get closer to a profit target, if it doesn't quite get to the profit target, would you please place a trailing stop in there for me somewhere. Where? I don't know. This optimized at 40 with a five and a scale out ratio, which says, let it, let it go until it trails me out. And then finally, the question that Jude is asking is, what is the, and I want to make sure I get this. I hope you have further clarification on customizing Algo 17, especially on ATR and compression exit. Okay. So, what do you mean when you say ESM20 moves by nine handles? Okay, um, is a handle based on price? Yes, so a handle is from 2940 to 2941 is one handle because it trades in quarter point increments. So it's one point, nine points. A tick is 0.25. The S&Ps trade in quarter point increments if you're trading the mini S&Ps. Right now you see on your screen, 2971 half. So if it went to 2972, it just moved one handle. If it moved from 2971 and a half to 2981 and a half, that would be 10 handles.
That's just old floor trader talk. It's not the correct nomenclature anymore. I'm an old dinosaur. Please accept my apologies for the confusion. There's ticks and points. A tick is minimum tick fluctuation is quarter point. A point is four ticks. Four ticks to a point, one point is a handle. So there's the definition. Thank you. Um, as far as compression eight ex uh, exit, what is the compression exit? This says no. I'm going to change this to one, which means true. I'm going to change this to 0.25. I'm going to turn off this, and I'm going to just modify by hand and, and jam and force it to make a compression exit. So what is a compression exit? What the compression exit is, is if the ATR, in this case, on a five-minute model, is now at five point. When this generated a buy signal, the ATR was five handles, five points, five handles, five points, right? You see where I'm lining it up. Right here, this bar, at the conclusion of the bar, we had an ATR of 5.67. Does everyone see that? ATR, 5.65, excuse me. There it is. At that point, I've just made the compression I just inserted manually. I didn't optimize it. I inserted manually. So again, I think it's a matter of education. What is last conditional change? A last conditional change is a market that closes above a particular high. The last conditional change becomes the support until it's violated. That's what these fuchsia colored lines are on your screen. So if the market, if it gave a buy signal, you'd say, use the last conditional change as my stop. And as you can see, it's turned off. A dynamic exit. Dynamic exit is a combination of ATR, meaning further away, and a, a combination of ATR. So we don't use the last ATR. We use a combination of the ATRs, slightly below the midpoint to be exact. And then finally, the compression exit. It uses that same function. However, it's very, it's a little too sophisticated. What it does is it tightens the stop up over time. And instead of using maybe 60% of the distance, it uses 30% of the distance and more time that goes on, it compresses and tightens the stop up. And so the compression stop, as you can see in this example right here, it gave a PPS long entry and notice here's our last conditional change it tightened up the stop and it stopped you out on that compression. That compression value was not optimized. I just changed it manually. So if you go back and you look at your format, and what did I just put it in? I just threw in a quarter ATR. So number one, use compression exit. One means true. When does the compression exit begin? as soon as the market moves a quarter percent of its current ATR. So to give you helpful information about this, when that signal generated, the current ATR was five. What's a quarter of five? 25% of five is 1.25. So at one and a quarter points or in five ticks, your compression stop loss function would kick on. If you have this ATR set at, say, one, we just change the whole dynamics. We just change the entire dynamics. It is not kicking in a new stop until we have one ATR. When we get one ATR away from your entry, what is one ATR? Five points. The uh, stop, which is the orange line, and a new orange line kicks in. Notice that the last conditional change, your stop was 
executed before the last conditional change because you asked it to get me out on a compression stop. So that is the difference. I hope that explains how that function can work by only using a compression stop basis. Um, Daniel, uh, George, do you use RINA? No, I do not to do different AUGO mo models. It, it is on the performance page, in, interested in my thoughts. You know, there's other variables that I use, George, other than the RINA, which is just basically a trade station formula, right? Um, so let's see. Uh, Joe, do you have one for TOS2? Uh, think or swim PMC or algo optimizer algo optimizer I'm not sure where that question at it came in at 504 when that came in I'm not sure Joe um, I, if you would retype what the whole question would be I didn't see that fast enough and I do apologize for that um, so I got Boris's question we'll do that in the room um, I think Brian you know tomorrow and since we're on algo and pug if tomorrow we have a calm day we're going to, since we do have more users here, uh, I got Brian K for some questions, and uh, you sent your questions in uh, today, this afternoon. I would like to get to these, and if you don't mind, Brian, I'm going to get to these questions tomorrow. I think this is great for the live trading room uh, for you, particularly uh, Brian K. Um, Brian K. Brian, I don't want to throw your last name under the bus. Hopefully, you know who I am. Brian K. You sent your question in Wednesday, May 20th at 1256 p.m. And I think these are some great questions. Um, you go through the five-minute ES strategy again. And you went through the video months ago. Wow. And we are boasting about the performance. And that is a fact because we don't just look at one five-minute model. We look at great signals in that model, which has done very well. So again, yes, let's do that tomorrow. That's you. All right. I don't want to throw you under the bus, but wouldn't it be better? We'll do that tomorrow in the live trading room. Bust my uh, hump tomorrow. Hit me over the head with a baseball bat. Post it in the room. Redo the video. Redo the redo the settings. And we'll do that tomorrow on, on the algo. Because I think that's if that's what the room is using, we need to do it for the room, right? That's the bottom line. So that's more of a publicly held thing for the for the live trading room. The pug meeting here is to help people educate so that they can carry on for their own stuff. And that's what I, I think that the, the, the spirit of what are the products, what do we do, what have we created, and how are they beneficial? Do they work? Um, obviously, almost every model that we've used, long-term, short-term, show promise. They, they show profitability. And um, if I may be so bold, many of you know what I do around here besides – uh, the new program here, uh, we're busy with other things such as trading. And this is something that I launched It possibly, and it was initially an index volatility fund. And uh, as more and more people opened with their retirement accounts, uh, it became, instead of an aggressive uh, performance, when people send in 401ks, they ain't sending me risk capital. They're sending me their retirement fund. So we we entered into the management uh, field uh, launched on September. I think the first trade was the 26th or the 25th of 2018. A week later, my mother passed unexpectedly. Uh, three days later, the market succumbed to a very nasty, uh, tumultuous decline. Um, as you can see, the uh, performance, there was what the stock market did going into, whether you want to look at S&P, DAX, and Dow. The blue line has been our performance over time in this environment. So we were very cognizant of the volatility, ATR, let's say. And I just thought I'd share this in real world, uh, in real trading, in, in, in managing other people's money, not just one account, managing other people's uh, retirement accounts. And so with that said, while granted we could be doing knocking the ball out with more aggressive position sizing, I've always taught in, in an environment where you're at historic levels, you shouldn't be trading with the, the exceedingly high position. Because, for example, uh, many of you may have heard the story or read the story. More importantly, uh, Jude brought it to our trading community, which we were trying to tell everyone in the crude oil 
man, this market is out of control. It's tough to trade. The CME raised their margins. TradeStation raised the margins 200% over what TradeStation did. And some, I would call him a numb nut because he tried to get away with something. The individual was an interactive broker is the story. It was released by Bloomberg. Uh, the guy traded crude oil on a $70,000 account. Now think of this crazy, all right? Uh, the day before delivery, I'm talking last trading day, not first notice date, last trade, like Monday, Tuesday morning, there's no trading. You're taking delivery if you're long. If you're short, you're making delivery, right? People bought futures and were trading. And I jokingly said, Mary goes, I go, crude oil is a dollar a barrel, a dollar a barrel. And I think it was an hour before the close. And my wife goes, oh, buy me some. I go, sweetie, the only way to make money on this trade is to buy it, accept delivery, store it in your swimming pool, and then sell a forward futures for June contract and book in the profit. An hour later, we all know what happened. It went historically at negative 37. No commodity has ever traded negative 37. Let me repeat that. No commodity ever in our history has gone negative in the marketplace. Folks, this is not stuff for you to try to get rich quick because then you do, things go crazy. We're trading historic things that don't make sense to a lot of people. My message is, you, you don't just take, and this particular individual thought he'd get cute, he quadrupled or I don't know how many, he actually took a $70,000 account and was in over 212, I think the number is 212 contracts of, of crude oil. What man in your right mind, if you think about it, a 50 cent move with 200 contracts is 100 grand. A 50 cent move is, is 100,000 on 200 positions. This numb nut was trying to get away with something and pull a fast one. That's the facts. If I was still an NFA arbitrator, I would I would tell this guy to go screw himself and he would have to write the check, which he lost, I believe, $9 million debit he owes Interactive Broker. He knew what he was doing. He never should have been in 200 contracts. And it is at the part of the mistake of Interactive Broker. They shouldn't have allowed the guy to trade more than two lots, let alone a 200 lot. Anyway, does anyone know that story? Because that is a true story. And, and so the point being is this market, if you had a $70,000 account, you want to talk about a bad day at the office. Can you imagine coming home to the wife and saying, um, oh, hey, sweetie, by the way, um, we got to sell the condo. The kids aren't going to school anymore. And I'm sorry, you can't go not only to the hairdresser, but I need to take all your credit cards. I owe interactive brokers $9 million. I owe them $9 million. That's a bad day at the office. This is you can go Google this story from Bloomberg interactive broker trader loses nine million dollars. Um, folks, this is the kind of thing that can happen to people. In any event, when volatility is increased and it's part of one of the great questions of why is ATR important? Because you don't know what kind of environment you're trading in. Is 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 the market expanding or contracting in daily trading ranges? You just think, oh, the market's normal. No, it's not. It's still at 76 points on a 10-day average true range is abnormal. And it could be an account killer. It could be a killer. And and that, my friends, is, is a subject that I want to make sure that I all instill in people. It's the right education and knowing what you're doing and having the, the, the process to know that this is a great industry. We do well in the markets. Hitting the ball out of the park comes in time. But making consistent gains over time is what's important. And I've always believed in position sizing is important. We've had great trades, but we've not had heavy position sizing. And when you hit one and a half, two and a half, three percent moves on an index in a given day, folks, we just don't see this often. So therefore, be cautious, be careful. And again, risk management stops, which is why we have last conditional change, which is why we have dynamic and also compression stops, three functions that you can manage a trade better. And that's in our algo optimizer. Is that a needed necessity for uh, someone trading a stock? Which, by the way, um, if, if I pointed out on... Um, If I may be so bold,
um, if I may be so bold, let's take a look at INTC on a 60 minute basis, Intel, and I might be talking to people. Um, you have white lines, hard to see, but that is a last conditional change. Yesterday, the market dropped and didn't take out the prior that day's pivot or the prior, see the white lines in the sand? And I'll, I'll zoom this up for you. So this is a breakout candle bar. The low of that bar becomes support. That support and the pivot is a double whammy. Yesterday, the market sold off on the close on some headline news to shake and bake people out to do the dump before the pump. And I think that's what this market is going to be continuously doing. It did last year on all of those news from Reuters that said, oh, the, the, there is no China deal, no China deal, no China deal. Remember that? That was all Reuters. It was one newswire service that put out those headline news. And this is a fact. Some of you were in the trading room. The fourth time we got that, the market dropped 14 handles. I said, hey, gang, it's another one of these stories about ch no deal with China. If it's from Reuters, this market's going to run right back up because everyone knows they're full of it. You know what? Seconds later, uh, oh, yeah, the news report came from uh, 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 Reuters with an uh, uh, anonymous source. Bang, market rallied right back. You guys were in the live trading room. You maybe remember this because I do rub your nose in this and remind you that a lot of times we see fake headline news come across and this market gets that shake and baked. And I just I can't say to me it's it, it's intentional, but it happens. And markets go down to try to get people out of their trades only to go right back up. And when you get the dump, it's almost systematically what I call the dump before the pump event. And if you can't break strong support like the last conditional change backed by a daily pivot, it's a stronger buy signal. Just my two cents. Um, anyway, that's why we have, and that's just the 60-minute chart using the 60-minute uh, bars with last conditional change. Back over here, last conditional change, pivot. Couldn't break it, market went up. It's stair steps. It's a very strong program, very strong indicator, something that I wrote about nearly 16 years ago. and eventually. It'll be out in the second edition book, which we are in the process of re-editing. So thank you all very much. That does. I went a little bit over. I got a little passionate about the whole risk reward thing and the, the, the guy trading as an, a former owner of a brokerage firm. Trust me. And, I, and I'm not joking. I was on the NFA arbitration committees. So anytime anyone had a complaint, we reviewed both sides of the story. And that's where we, we stood. And uh, you know what? These markets... They're unprecedented. The ATR proves it. The volatility proves it. The opportunities are there for both insane wins and insane losses. Thank you all very much. I will be seeing you guys in the room tomorrow. We will be redoing and spending time with the five-minute algo uh, optimizer and going through that for everyone in the room. Again, I thank you for your time and visiting with me today. Hopefully, we gave you a better understanding of what uh, our indicators can do, how I use them both in um, teaching, a live trade room, as well as real money. If you want any more uh, details and information on the material covered in this session, you can contact Mary Person. There's our phone number or by email, mperson at personsplanet.com. Thank you all very much. And yes, Joel, there will be a replay of this recording eventually. Uh, we're just not that sophisticated to put it out in four seconds flat, but we will email you when it is done. Thank you very much for your interest, sir. And uh, yeah, probably by tonight, tomorrow. OK, uh, it won't be a week from now. Today, tomorrow, we're, we'll get on it eventually. I mean, I've already had a cup of coffee. I ain't going to bed anytime soon. That's for sure. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you all very much and have a great rest of your week.